Howdy everyone, this is Dave, and in this video, we will be covering the grisly demise of Balthazar Gerard, who was made an example of after assassinating the Dutch revolt leader, William the Silent. In the year 1566, Dutch rebels began performing acts of defiance against Spain, who at the time had control over the Netherlands. Philip II of Spain obtained the throne after his father, Charles V, passed away. The Netherlands had been united under Charles V, who had been raised there. Charles was not only the King of Spain, but also the Holy Roman Emperor, the Archduke of Austria, the Lord of the Netherlands, and the Duke of Burgundy. When Philip came to power, he did not feel the same connection to the Netherlands that his father did. Under Philip II's reign, certain events transpired that caused strife within the Netherlands. Taxation for wars that negatively impacted their trading and way of life. Philip II wanting more control of his empire. This centralization increased his authority and he had influence in affairs such as the law and taxes that were levied upon his subjects. Another factor was an intolerance for Protestants. Charles V and Philip II felt that it was their responsibility to combat Protestantism and rallied for their persecution. This caused more friction with the Netherlands, and by 1568, the Eighty Years' War had begun. William the Silent, Prince of Orange, maintained a seat as a governor of the Spanish Netherlands and was not pleased with the persecution of the Dutch Protestants or the centralism that was ripping away the ability for local powers to govern themselves. He decided to join the Dutch in their revolution. William proved to be an irreplaceable asset to the Dutch. His political savvy and influence led to several successes in their fight against Spain. He was a cherished and beloved leader. By the year 1580, the rebellious provinces were united. Philip II had had enough of William and declared him an outlaw, placing a bounty on his head. The reward for capturing or killing William the Silent was 25,000 crowns and would also include an estate as well as a noble title. Essentially, whoever fulfilled the requirements of the bounty would instantly transcend into nobility. The reward was too good to pass up for a man named Balthazar Gerard, a French lawyer and father of eleven. Either compelled by his admiration for Philip II or by his desire for the vast wealth, he disembarked on his quest and headed to Luxembourg. The year was 1582. When he arrived, he found out about an assassination attempt that left William the Silent severely wounded. The attempt was ultimately a failure, and the assassin was killed in the attempt. William recovered from the attack, and the bounty was still attainable. Balthazar went to a few different locations, trying to formulate his plan. He was able to secure a place to find refuge after the event, but was not able to negotiate any funding for his endeavor. He traveled to the city of Delft and went to Prinzenhof. This structure is built as a monastery in the Middle Ages and at the time served as William the Silent's residence. Balthazar performed reconnaissance and was eventually confronted by a halberdier in the courtyard, who promptly asked why Gerard was hanging around there. Remember that he was doing this expecting a life-changing payday at the end, but in the meantime, he had to pay his own travel and expenses. After years of preparation to get this far, the clothing and shoes he was wearing were in rough shape. Balthazar thought quickly and made an excuse for himself by saying that his attire was unfit to join the church congregation and that is why he was loitering outside. He figured that would be enough to satiate the question, but it moved the guard, who took pity on him enough to arrange for William, Prince of Orange himself, to donate 50 crowns to buy Gerard some new clothes. William could not have known this at the time, but with this simple act of charity, he inadvertently funded his own assassination. The next morning, Balthazar approached a soldier and purchased a pair of pistols. On July 10th, 1584, an old Welsh captain addressed William the Silent in a stairwell. The captain knelt before him 
and William placed his hand on the head of the captain. Out of the dark corner in which he was hiding, Balthazar Gerard appeared, drawing his weapons. Gerard unloaded both pistols into William, and he crumpled to the floor. Those within earshot ran to the room, his sister kneeling at his side. William the Silent was dead. The Welsh captain gave chase to Gerard, who sprinted through a side door and across a narrow passage. Balthazar had a pig's bladder tied to his waist that was going to act as a flotation device once he leapt off the ramparts and into the moat, where he would then swim to the other side and hop on a horse that he had ready to go. Nowadays we are so used to video games and movies depicting these types of things, giving us an idea of how one would try to carry out such a plot. But this was the actual 16th century, and to my knowledge, there was no manual on how to assassinate a prince and get away with it. He was set on doing what he came to do, but he was still human. His heart had to have been pounding out of his chest, arms shaking, legs probably feeling weak, then having the presence of mind to carry out your deed, and then make a mad dash to safety. If you're not a fan of being chased, then this would be your worst nightmare. In all honesty, his plan seemed sound to me. It's exactly how I'd imagine escaping an Assassin's Creed. So, of course, that means it's a good idea. Balthazar tripped over a pile of trash and was consequently apprehended. When asked why he would do such a traitorous thing, Balthazar replied by saying that he wasn't a traitor, but a loyal servant to the King of Spain. No matter what, Balthazar would have been a dead man, but stating that he assassinated their beloved leader for Spain no doubt sealed his unimaginable doom. From the moment Balthazar was in custody, he began receiving countless blows from fists and the butt of a sword. In an expeditiously arranged trial, he did not show any form of regret for his actions. To say that the city magistrates threw the book at him is beyond an understatement. Balthazar was sentenced to be tortured and executed in a way that was thought to be barbaric even for the time period. For the Dutch, who just lost a very important leader, this was going to be an act of revenge. On the first night of Balthazar's captivity, he was given near constant beatings, with no hope of stopping. The guards hung him up on a pole with his arms tied and gave him several lashes with a whip, the leather cords with sharp pieces attached, tearing chunks of flesh and muscle from his body. Someone then got the idea to smear honey over Gerard's open wounds, to try to entice a goat to come over and lick it off with its rough tongue. The goat, however, showed disinterest, so the idea was abandoned. After other tortures, the guards took a break and left Gerard alone for the rest of the night. It wouldn't be that easy though, as his hands and feet were bound together like a ball, so the uncomfortable position on top of the gaping wounds covering his body meant that sleep would be near impossible. Hours of writhing in pain, only for the guards to come back and subject him to more. Over the next three days, Gerard was given constant punishment. He was hung up on a pole with his arms tied behind his back and repeatedly mocked. Then, weight adding up to 300 pounds was attached to each of his big toes. This caused irreparable damage as the bones and ligaments were no match for the weight, all but completely tearing them off. After a half hour, the weights were removed, and Gerard was fitted with a pair of shoes that were two fingers shorter than his feet. These shoes were made of uncured dog skin and had essentially been soaked in oil. It would be uncomfortable enough to have shoes that are too small, but imagine that your toes were literally pulled from your body, but are still attached, and your feet are being shoved into them. Then his feet were held over an open fire, and when the shoes got warmer, they contracted further, crushing his feet in the process. By the end of that torture, Balthazar's feet were rendered to nothing but a pair of crumpled stumps. When the shoes were violently removed, the half-boiled skin beneath was torn off. After this grotesque focus on his feet, they moved on to other parts of Gerard's body to destroy. They held his arms up and placed red-hot irons on his armpits, branding them. 
probably one of the worst places to cause maximum suffering, as the friction of having your blistering skin constantly rub against itself would be inescapable. After the branding, a shirt that was doused in alcohol was placed upon him, inflicting unimaginable pain on the wounds that covered his entire being. Then, boiling hot bacon fat was poured over him, causing unbelievable burns and ensuring that his entire body had been injured in some form. To end his trials of torture, sharp nails were driven between the flesh and nails of his hands and what was left of his feet. Gerard's body was in complete ruins and the time for his execution had arrived, but even his death proved to be an ordeal in and of itself. The magistrates ordered that Gerard have his right hand completely burned off with a hot iron, then use metal pincers to tear the flesh from his bones at six different points. His tattered body was then quartered and disemboweled while he was still alive. It is said that through the whole ordeal, Balthazar refrained from crying out. Apparently aware, when they cut open his chest, tore out his still beating heart, and threw it in his face. Obviously, no human can survive after this, so they finish the ordeal by taking off his head. It's worth noting that this shooting was the first recorded political assassination of a head of state with a firearm. His severed head was then set on a pike, and his arms and legs were taken to four different gates of the city and then put on display. In the aftermath, Philip II passed the reward to Gerard's parents, and hopefully the spouse if he had one, or the eleven kids that he left behind. Philip II would later offer estates to Philip William, Orange's son, and the next Prince of Orange, but the catch would be that he would have to pay a fixed portion of Gerard's family's rent, meaning that he would be financially providing for the family of the man who murdered his father. The offer was rejected. The estates remained in Gerard's family, so ultimately his sacrifices paid off for them. There was an attempt to have Balthazar canonized, but the church officials in Rome rejected the idea. And that's just about all there is to tell about the brutal death of Balthazar Gerard. This is certainly an execution that has stuck in my head ever since I heard about it, and I'm sure it will for you as well. If you found a way to enjoy what you saw here, please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, have a good one.